Small business actually seeing some signs of slowing labor trends, according to the latest data from Paychex. Their jobs index declining in April. That marks the slowest pace of job growth in 2023 to date. Joining us right now is John Gibson. He is the CEO of Paychex. And John, let's just talk this through because one of the sticking points, one of the concerns people have is that the job market has been so strong that the Fed is going to continue to raise rates. Not that you want to root for a weaker job market, but what, what are you seeing at this point? What signs of weakness? Well, first of all, Becky, it's great to be with you during National Small Business Week. Uh, I think, as you know, uh, small businesses represent 99 percent of all businesses in the U.S., about two-thirds of the jobs that we've been creating in, are in small businesses. Um, and they tend not to get the headlines and airtime of larger firms, but really without them, we don't have an economy. You know, what we're seeing in the index is we're continuing to see wages uh, slow. Um, and r relative to what you said, while the small index went down in April, this is the first month in 2023 that the job index has actually went down for small and medium-sized businesses. So when you look at it at a macro level, we're still above pre-pandemic levels. All right, so that's good news. You think this is just a snap back to normal, or is this something more? Is there a, a bigger concern about the economy based on what you've seen? Well, look, I think there's no question small businesses continue to be concerned about inflation. I mean, certainly what the Fed is doing is working. We see that in, in the wage, wage numbers here. I also think that you have a redistribution of some jobs. Um, we read about the tech, uh, the tech layoffs. I think there was a lot of uh, irrational hiring, if you will, going on in the marketplace. We're seeing that hiring. Actually, those jobs are getting absorbed pretty well in the economy and the data we see. And even when you look at the JOLD index, um, while job openings are down overall, in the one to nine, the micro small space, they're still at record levels. So we still see a very uh, 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 small business owners are really still trying to uh, hire up from the, from the great resignation. John, what you said is interesting, though, that, that small businesses are still, I guess, you, from the data you've seen, inflation is still their number one issue? Or are they concerned? Because you made it sound like they're happy about what the Fed's doing. I would imagine they probably are a little concerned about higher interest rates and what that means for their borrowing costs and lots of other things, too, though. Yes, yes, Becky. I would say still it's still rates number one. Inflation is the number one issue. Again, small businesses tend to have a little less price re pricing power than large businesses. Um, also, competing for labor is a challenge for them in this kind of market. But to your point, closely on its heels now is really the cost of capital, but now a lot of concerns about access to capital, particularly with the disruptions we've seen in the regional banking system. And I think that's a critical thing policymakers need to address is there are very strong and vibrant small businesses owners out there, a lot of people who want to start new businesses, particularly in Gen Z. We just did a special report on Gen Z, and they're becoming a bigger part of the workforce, and they want to control their own destiny. And I think we've got to do things from a policy perspective to allow those small businesses to flourish, because as we said, without small businesses flourishing, having access to growth capital, it's really going to be hard to drive the economy. Wage growth is slowing, too. That's uh, a key that the Fed kind of keeps an eye on, too. Yes, and, and, and Becky, it goes back to since I started appearing with you, uh, uh, it has continued to slow over time. And that's what we see is, obviously, the Fed's actions is working. The real issue in my mind um, has been historically in the labor market is we just have not had the participation rate. Now, it's good to see we're starting to see, and particularly the critical working age of 25 to 54, that rate has gotten back to pre-pandemic levels. We're starting to see immigration back to pre-pandemic levels. It was highly disruptive. It seems to me that the way policy makers need to think about reducing wage inflation is increasing the supply of high quality labor versus just relying on Fed action to raise interest rates, which you pointed out is doing nothing but uh, raising the cost of capital uh, for growth for small businesses. 